Hour one, Kether. The Marquis woke at five, out of sorts, cotton mouth, rancid and sequestered. Hung over, beleaguered, uncrowned and tamed. His divine creative will munching on a lint-scented cough sweet. He was that he was. His will ventures to repeat, get up, stand up, on your feet, repeat, feet. The small blind burns the cards over the sink, a small test of God's own creation. She's wearing somebody else's eyes so you can never see her winking. The ashes of the cards bitter in the kether you are drinking. Hour two, Chokma. From nothing comes nothing. Till you twist that demon's tawdry skull and force him drop his Bible. An ego felch, a lion's tongue licking the scaly skin off the industry of religion. But good coffee first, lest intelligence jail me. It's early yet, big hands don't fail me. Your jackboot left beside my bed, your high heel shoe stuck in my ear, your lip tattoo, tearful contradictions, your plastic peopled universe of eye, heart, porno maledictions. But coffee first, lest intelligence jail me. It's only six. Big feet, don't fail me. Hour three, Binner. Thanks for understanding and not bleeding all up the school hallway. Your cassock absorbed the worst of it and your vessel deep and still, but for the odd drip, drip, drip from your funny headless torso. I hate alarms, firearms, exercise, dogs and worms, an earache even more so. I braided all my mannequins and named each and every one Lisa and Mary to name but two, and Joe and Mike and Tom. To see us, you would think us mad, but in madness lies our reason. Return to me, my honey child, for this dark and lonely season. Hour four, Kessed. Thanks for having me. I didn't mean to wake you, but the sun's rising over the mountain and it looks so beautiful from here. I made us coffee. Come and sit with me on the roof and we can watch the sun rising together. You don't want to. You feel sick. You want to sleep a little longer. You feel sharp pains all over your body. Shall I call a doctor? You don't want a doctor. Can I get you anything? You don't want the coffee. You do want the coffee. I can bring it to you. We can watch the sunrise tomorrow. You don't want to watch the sunrise. Why wouldn't someone want to watch a sunrise? Are you right in the head? You have a pain in your head. Sharp pains? Good. Hour five, Gebura. The Marquis threw back the heavy covers of his sandy bed and stretched. Why me? he muttered, his bones sun-bleached. Plucking feathers from his teeth, he lisped. The phoenix was undercooked and should never have been stuffed. God is not great and God did not make little green apples. God, which is dog spelt, cornered the Marquis and said, Get up and dance, motherfucker. The Dernissage is going to be as spectacular as the Vernissage is going to be as spectacular as the Dernissage is going to be as spectacular as the Vernissage is going to be as spectacular as the Dernissage is going to be as spectacular as the Vernissage. <laughs> Hour six, Tifereth. Soon his tired eyes took on a noble aspect as he squinted at the horizon. There's hope in the old dog yet, he thought, as he put his hand down his pyjama bottoms and wondered whether he shouldn't keep that for later. There's beauty in comparison, and even more beauty in temperance. This is merely a flesh wound. There's no need for an ambulance. The opposite chairs icon, in perfect symmetry, made a good case for keeping the debate alive and never trusting solutions. The waters are calm, the air is close. This mood could go either way, and the thing is, when you know, you know. You know? No, I know. Hour seven. Netzak. The Marquis asked her to wear a little less rouge, but not to skimp on the hairspray. He wanted her to be as perfect as perfect. It sucked to be him. When she leaned in close to whisper good night, he told her in no uncertain terms that the parameters of the bathtub sesames and Bert and Ernie junkets were paramount to labelling the unnamed inner elbow, and consequently 
Petra, my languishing Tallulah. I'd be grateful if you terraformed another empty vessel. She did not understand his line of thought, and so, counting to ten, she stuck him like a pincushion till he promised to make sense. Hour eight. Hod. And oh, the sweet surrender, to let go of the corpulent fox and tie oneself instead to the dignity, always dignity, of Six's sincerity. The Talmud burnt to dust, the coaxing looks, the shy advances pulverised in the labour of marching hoof to hoof, with the fallen angel's brethren whose sole means of being deciphered is to swear to fuck like a brown Antichinus. Hour nine. Yes, Odd. Overwhelmed by a giantess, the grenade of love unpinned. The foundation of our sacrilege penned by the magic hand of chance. Your unprecedented stamina for convoluted pap. Your excuse of being stabbed to death just so you could take a nap and miss their untimely visit. The explosion ripped our flesh apart and revealed two lost ventriloquists. Finally free of sexy physicist effigies and the false harmony of contained conflicts. Hour 10. Malkuth. Marquis, Marquis, it's nearly three. You wasted half the day away. In fettered looks and cold regards and left to your own devices, you retreated by too many leagues and forgot to feed your dragon. He blazes in the far, far east and lights the way for you, despite your selfish mornings and pointless solitudes. Marquis, Marquis, look at me. The light you never showed is reciprocated evenly by those who loved you, despite you never once pretending to show adequate concern about how anyone was faring. Your intellect denying you actual sight visions, swift and sublime. The reward you sought for doing naught still awaits you in her bosom, the mother you regarded as a necessary evil. <laughs>